So you've done the self-help and you've dipped into some personal development, but now you ask the question, now what? What can you do? Well, if you want to escape the apathy, step right this way. So twice a year, I teach a course called Autonomy. It's a 12-week personal development and training course. What people get out of it is multifaceted. Uh, there's curriculum, there's exercises, there's camaraderie. You make new friends. There's a whole lot of interesting things. We're going to hear a sample from the course right now, and it's, let's take a look at the value these students are getting. I'm behind. Okay. Uh, my, my question would be like, uh, listening, can we see it? <laughs> if it's a way to put it, to see listening, uh, as, uh, seeing opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the gist is if I'm having a, if I'm having a discovery call with a client, I have no idea who this person is. Right. So I have to. Uh, bridge the communication. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, the, set some structure for the call. It's going to be an hour long. I'm going to ask some questions. At some point in there, I'm listening with the intent to understand. And once I understand, and then I also understand maybe where they're at or what they've tried or what's holding them back. I can either ask questions to probe those things, but once I have like um, a solution set, then I can make recommendations. Have you tried this? Are you willing to put this over here and maybe put this over here? And then these, these pieces would fit together, right? Cause a lot of times it's a puzzle and they're either missing pieces or they're misconstruing some of the pieces, or maybe one of the pieces is over here and they, they misplaced it or something. And I'm like, Hey, there's a piece that goes here. Oh, we have it over here. We didn't recognize. So it's really inquiry that allows you to then see opportunity and the opportunity is on the other side of their problem or solution. So if you're at the valley, the opportunity can be seen from the top of the mountain, but you have to be able to get people there with your articulation so they can also see, oh, there's a town over there. We could get supplies. And then they want to go up and over the mountain with you to get supplies. So that could be like the gist. Does that make, does that translate through? Because you're asking, what is the nature of these opportunities? These opportunities, let's go back to, um, uh, the second to the last speaker, the, the knocking on the doors to sell the books. When you have a skill set and a product and an offer, and you're in a neighborhood of endless doors, I see that as endless opportunities. There's those people have kids, they have grandchildren, they're looking for gifts. Like there's endless opportunities. Maybe nine out of 10 is a no, but that one out of 10 is a yes. And if I get 10, 20, 30, 40, a hundred doors knocked, I have a stack of sales. I might be able to, in his case, he was looking for commission or when kids do this in school for fundraisers, they're looking for the prizes and the awards, right? And that might be like the superficial incentive to get them started, but it should never be like the end goal or the reaction. That last guy who talked, Mace Horoff, he was talking about like doing these things to make commission. So I am going to show you guys, especially next week, examples of sales being done wrong. So you have comparison and contrast. So there's several clips next week, which is not how you do it. But now you know what done wrong looks like. Pretty much everything else is done right. If you just avoid these couple of things of don't do these things, you know, the, that's why it's very much unstructured, natural, genuine, um, authentic. You know, there's so many different ways to have conversations, but certain elements need to be in there for it to be the, the recipe. During that process of asking the questions, building that understanding, you're then seeing various opportunities as a, as somebody who is offering, you know, kitchen renovation services, as you understand their need, their budget, their time frame, you could say, well, we could take out this wall and you can make this an open plan and you can see into the, the living room or family room, right? You could give them more opportunities. They may say they have the money for that, but it would take too long or it ruins this airflow or they might have pushback, right? But so you're trying on various visions for them to see which one might be amenable to them for a next step. And then you make a plan and you sort out what resources, manpower, labor, uh, the materials, these sort of things. And you give them an estimate and they say yes, no, or they negotiate or they get on a payment plan and you do one part now, one part later. I don't know, but it opens up opportunity only after you've made contact, built rapport, had a conversation where you've generated understanding. It's at that point of understanding that all the opportunities become visible as it were. Does that make sense? I was sense? thinking, yeah, it makes sense. I was thinking also in a wider term, for example, to uh, observe and uh, see opportunity 
as a way of listening. So actually observe what are the problems around. Well, now you're getting into uh, some semantics that, okay, so I would say it like this. People are genuine and curious and listening because they know there's a general sense of opportunity in life situations, right? If you're looking to explore opportunities, you might also find it be a good lifestyle to be an attitude of gratitude and be pleasant and polite to people. Otherwise, you might be being rude to somebody who tomorrow you want to ask opportunity from and that's not going to go well. So plant the seeds every day with positive actions, politeness, these sort of things. So now you're going into the world with an optimistic headset. So you're seeing opportunity in general, but it's not until you make those human contacts specifically that you get the specific opportunities that can be grasped and acted on in life, right? So we enter into it with this nebulous subjective connotation and through our actions we get into the objective actual actions on certain dates at certain times scheduling our success how's that feel yeah it's it's thank you i just wanted to make sure it wasn't being lost in translation <laughs> no it's uh, yeah got it All right, thanks Everyone's doing some kind of self-help these days, and you can find a million self-help courses out there. Most other courses out there are hosting lectures, they're hosting videos, they're maybe even doing Q&As, and these are great starting points to encourage learning. But at Autonomy, we believe that hands-on practice is the best way to really lock in what we're learning. There's no better way to gain confidence and mastery than through action. After each lecture, we practice the concepts we've learned with other students, giving and receiving feedback in a non-judgmental environment. The result is mastery of concepts like entrepreneurship, ethical sales, and self-reliance in an environment that directly translates to the real world. Plus, you make connections with other like-minded individuals who are learning right alongside you, and you have a lifetime membership in the community. The Autonomy course with Richard Grove equips you with confidence, competence, and courage in a world filled with confusion and noise. You can learn more at getautonomy.info. We'll see you there.